Steely and this is the video for your Tuesday reading. So I'm going to read for you the story and I will read for you the questions. So here is the story, A Very Talented Lizard. A lizard called a basilisk lizard lives in the rainforest of South America. This is a great place for them to live because there is a lot of tasty food. Basilisk lizards consume plants, insects, snakes, and birds for food. But they have to watch out because other animals will eat them too. Basilisk lizards are very talented. This means that they can do things that help them stay safe and live longer. For example, they are good at climbing trees. They can climb trees to get away from other animals. Some animals want to eat them. Basilisk lizards have green skin so that they can hide behind leaves. This helps, them, this helps keep them safe and secure from birds that want to gobble them up. Another neat trick of basilisk lizards is that they can run across water. If a basilisk lizard is scared, it will stand up on its back legs and run. They can stay on top of the water because they move so fast and they have special feet. Also, they have skin between their toes that is called webbing. This webbing helps them stay floating on top of the water because their toes are stuck together like a flipper. They can sometimes run up to 15 feet across the water. This helps them stay alive. A basilisk lizard is a great swimmer. It can get away from danger by swimming underwater. These lizards can hold their breath for up to 30 minutes. This means that they can stay underwater until the danger is gone. They need to be careful because fish may find them and eat them as a tasty treat. So, that was a very talented lizard. I'm going to go ahead and read to you the questions, but I'm not walking you through these questions today. If you need assistance on the questions, please, please go back to Monday's video and listen to the walkthrough instructions because they will be the same for this worksheet. Number one, write three questions in which the answers could be found in the text. Number two, yellow highlight. What does the basilisk lizard eat? Don't forget, you will need your three colored markers. Blue, where does the basilisk lizard live? Four, highlight in orange. What does the basilisk lizard eat? How does the basilisk lizard walk on water? Remember, you're going to go find those answers and highlight them in the appropriate colors. Number five, why do basilisk lizards need, spe need special talents? Our lizard did several special things. You need to find your evidence, reuse some of the vocabulary in your question, and write a complete answer. I would add because and use that as your sentence stem. Number six, write one word to summarize each of the following paragraphs. Remember, go back to paragraph C. Find one important word and circle it and put the number six next to it. On this one, go back to paragraph D. Find one important word in that paragraph and write the number six next to that word as well. And then write each of the words that you circled on the line. For number seven, you find three important words in the text. 
These could be words you've already circled or underlined previously, but you're going to put the number 7 next to it. Remember, you're only looking for 3. Number 8. Summarize three special talents of basculus lizards in less than three sentences. All right, so if you have more than three sentences, you're going to not follow the directions. So less than three. So you need one to three sentences. Do not write any more than that. And you need to list three special talents of Vesculus lizards, and I would say R, and use that as your sentence stem. Make sure you are using complete sentences with capital letters, punctuation, and five to seven words. Make sure that you are circling your evidence in your story. So go back to your story and circle the evidence and write the number 8 next to your evidence. And restate the question. Three special talents of basculus lizards are... And then finish that sentence. If you turn the page, I'll also read number 9 and 10. 11, 12, and 13 for you. Write one to three words that describe the main topic of the text. What was this story mostly about? What is the main idea? Use only three words. Number 10. Write one sentence that tells about the main idea of the text. You may go back to the story and find a main idea, a good sentence that talks about what is included in this paragraph or story. Make sure you have a complete sentence. Make sure it has capital letters, punctuation, five to seven words, and it talks about the main idea of the text. If you need a sentence stem, here would be your sentence stem. The main idea of the text is, and finish the sentence. Make sure you circle your evidence in the text and write the number 10 next to it. Number 11, find consume in the text. Use the context clues to explain what the word means. Circle the word in that text that are clues to the meaning of the word. You have three steps. Go find the word in the story and it will be underlined. And remember, how do we look for the meanings of unknown words? Usually we read the sentence before and the sentence after and look for the clues within those couple sentences. But if you remember on Monday, we did have to reread the whole paragraph. So don't be afraid of reading a little extra, guys. It can be helpful. So once you find the word, circle the context clues that tell you what consume means. And then you will write consume means and you will finish that sentence. Make sure you have capital letters, punctuation, five to seven words. Number 12. Find webbing in the text. Use the context clues to explain what this word means. Circle the words in the text that are clues to the meaning of the word. Again, you will follow the same directions as we did for number 11. And if you still need more assistance, please go back and re-watch Monday's video. Number 13. Do you think the author wrote this text mostly to 
explain, describe, or answer a question. Was he explaining how to make something or how to do something? Was he giving you steps? Or was he describing something? Or was there a question that was being answered? You think about that one and put an X in the box that, for the correct answer. Whichever box you mark, circle the vocabulary word that you will be using. What is the author trying to explain, describe, or answer? Answer that question in a complete sentence. Remember, capital letters, punctuation, five to seven words, and make sure it answers the question and makes sense. We've been practicing and practicing a lot of these skills. Please make sure that Miss Steely and Miss Killingsworth can read your handwriting on your work. We are grading these, so it will be very important for you to follow the directions of making sure you have a complete sentence. You guys have a great day, and I will be reading your next story shortly. Bye.